In this video, we are going to be deriving the formula for pressure volume, otherwise known as PV, work. And this is a common thing that you will discuss in introductory thermodynamics courses. And the very first place that we're going to start is turning to the definition of work that we learned from high school physics. And that work is equivalent to a force times a displacement. And as we get more nuanced, we will recognize that force is really a vector and our displacement is also a vector. So when we take the dot product of these two vectors, we end up with a scalar quantity, which is the amount of work done by our system. And um, the first thing that we're going to be turning to, again, looking back to physics, is the definition of pressure. Pressure is defined to be the amount of force that a fluid is exerting over some given area. And in addition to that, the volume, if we were to consider a piston with a constant area and a uh, coordinate going down into the piston of X, we can define the volume of our cylinder to be equivalent to area of the base A times the height X. And so with these two things out of the way, um, when we begin to look at differential control volumes, to look at the amount of work done, we take the derivative of work, we end up with force times dx. And as we turn to these definitions, if we rearrange this and multiply both sides of the equation by a, we will recognize that f is real equivalent to pressure times area. And x here is equivalent to volume divided by area and dx is equivalent to dv times one over area. If we assume area is constant. And so if we were to plug in now our definitions of dx and force, what we will see is that the work done in our differential uh, control volume will be equivalent to pressure times area, which was F times DX, which was one over area times DV. And so what we'll recognize here when we have a constant area is that the area terms cancel out and we're left with the change in work inside of our little control volume is equivalent to P times DV. Now, what we're going to do uh, is integrate both sides of our equation to solve for the total amount of work done during an expansion or contraction. And what we're going to find is that we have V1 to V2 and work is ultimately equivalent to negative integral from V1 to V2 of pressure times the change in volume of your process. And in the case when uh, pressure is constant, we can pull out pressure from this integral, but um, generally we will leave it in this final format. And so to plot this out, because typically you're going to be asked uh, these types of questions on exams, um, if we have graphs of pressure and volume, what we're really calculating as we are taking this integral is the area under the curve of you know, P2, P1, V1, V2. And um, the reason we have this negative sign right here is because depending on which direction we are headed, if V1 is smaller than V2, If we are compressing our system, then this area will be negative because we are moving to the left. Work is done on the system. And then if V2 is greater than V1, work is done by the system. Example of this would be uh, the combustion engine inside of your car. It is doing work on the system. Uh, 
it's, it's being done by the system to deliver the power that your wheels put onto the road to drive you to San Francisco. So um, this is a common graph you will see um, people draw. The reason we want to leave it in this format is because quite often the pressure is not constant, so we need to keep it inside of our integral. We are essentially, and if you can remember, this is a very important point, we're just taking the integral under the curve. The direction matters extraordinarily because we're defining whether or not work is being done on or by the system. And so in the case when we're doing compression, we are putting work into our system. We're increasing its internal energy. When our system is expanding, we're doing work by our system, uh, in which case V2 is greater than V1. And so the work would be uh, leaving our system, so it would have a negative quantity. And so that's going to wrap things up for this introduction to work or pressure volume work and thermodynamics. I hope this helps and thanks for watching.